change in either of the two teams. Senior Harling final of 1995, and the team line out as follows Castellan in goal, John Lyons, Jerry Phelan, PJ Cuddy, and Martin Phelan. The half back line on the right is John Cuddy, the team captain, centre half back Paul Cuddy, and John Sullivan. Middle of the field is David Cuddy and Eamon Kerwin. The half forward is Parry Cuddy, Dennis O'Gorman, and Finton Cuddy. Paddy Dollard is right corner forward, full forward is Finn Sullivan, and Pat Phelan is on top of the left. Port Leash in goal is John Hannafy, Brian Murphy, Sir Duggan, and Noel Regney. Half back line, Des Rigney, Eamon Murphy, John Taylor, Niall Rigney, Eamon Fanley, Liam Bergen, the captain, Barry Harns, Brock and Riley, Brian Bohan, Paul Bergen, and Michael O'Sullivan. And the referee for today's game is Pat O'Neill. The ball is thrown in and the first to break away. A foul for Castletown to be taken by their centre half back, Paul Cuddy, twin brother of midfielder David. Bending and lifting and striking a great ball from Paul Cuddy as John Hannafy looks up. It looks like the opening score of the Leeds Holding final. Point by Paul Cuddy. Oh, put those around the centre of the field, right between David Cuddy and Nile Rigney. In there too is uh, Barry Kearns, ball beaten away from Kearns. Foul there on uh, Port Leisha, man went down injured. Seemed to be an accident there. But uh, an incident back here with Paul Cuddy and Barry Cairns and referee Pat O'Neill going back to have a word with his umpires. There seemed to be a bit of a swinging of the hurley there by Port Leisha player after the ball was cleared out.
the injury to uh, Noel Rigney seems to be all right up here in the fence. Referee is looking for number 11, I'd say, on the Port Leisure team. Barry Cairns, the Port Leash centre half forward, goes into the book after just two minutes of play after an altercation with Paul Cuddy, the Castletown centre half back, who seems to be recovering and taking his place. But Pat O'Neill going to take no nonsense here. between Naaman Kerwin and Niall Rigney. Kerwin gets the better, it doesn't go very far though. Over on the far side towards Naaman Kerwin again, Naaman Kerwin is fouled and another free to Castletown. It'll be taken by Paul Goody, he got a point from the free after just one minute of play. A chance to stretch the Castletown advantage after just two and a half minutes of play. Paul Goody with the free, dropping it in. And this time it's gone over the bar. Second point for Paul Cuddy. Two points to Castletown. No score for Port Leash. As John Hannafy pokes out in the Port Leash goal. Dropping it down around the half hour line down towards Liam Bergen. And Barry Kearns, Liam Bergen trying to get around his man, the captain of the Port Leash team. Tackled by Johnny Sullivan. Keeps holds onto the ball. Tackled by Eamon Kerwin. The ball kept in play. Cleared out by David, back towards uh, John Taylor. John Taylor of Port Leash. John Taylor is beaten though. Ball going in towards the corner forward, in towards Pat Phelan. Pat Phelan trying to get room to take a shot. Takes his shot out over the end line in the first wide of the game for Castletown by Pat Phelan. But a good effort from uh, 50 metres out. Puck out to be taken by John Hannafy. Breeze seemed to be blown into his face slightly in the opening half as the ball dropped around centre of the field. No pattern developing around centre of the field. Yeah, has David Cuddy losing his helmet. Tucks in a great ball in towards the corner, in towards Hanafy's corner and out over the end line. John Hanafy moved out for two wides for Castown and two points for Castown. No score for Port Leash and no wides after three and a half minutes of play. Castown hoping to win their first ever Leash a senior hurling title. John Hanafy to puck out here in the Port Leash goal. Dropping it down around the centre of the field again. Down towards Eamon Fenley. Fenley pulls the second hand, gets a good ball along the ground. In towards Brian Bohan, beats Brian Bohan. Goes in towards the full forward, towards Paul Bergen. Paul takes a look at the goal, a shot from Paul Bergen. And a point from Paul Bergen. Good delivery there from Eamon Fenley at middle of the field. And John Lyons with his first puck out of the Leash Senior Hurling Final. John sends a great ball around the centre of the field down towards Dennis Gorman and Eamon Murphy. Murphy goes backwards, doesn't get it very far, breaks out towards Rigney. Brian Bohan loses his hurl, this will suit Martin Field. Martin Field gets out towards Paul Cuddy. Paul Cuddy on Mark, sends a low ball, he waits for John Taylor. John Taylor loses it again, falls to the ground towards the Castletown man. Powery Cuddy, well cleared out though by Sir Duggan, sends a great ball down towards Brian Bohan and Martin Field. Back towards Johnny Sullivan. John Sullivan goes back, clears out a good ball. Well beyond centre field. He's looking for Fint Cuddy. Fint Cuddy has it. Going to keep it from going out over the sideline. Fint didn't play in the semi final. Goes back and gets it. Sends it across the goal mount. Danger in here for Port Leash. But back in there is uh, their half back, Johnny Taylor. John sends a relieving clearance way up past centre of the field. Great ball, but out over the sideline. Uh, Brock and Riley went for it, but the linesman's flag was up. And it'll be a line ball for Castletown. Taken over there by David Cuddy. Struck a few great balls in the semi final against Cameras. Castown's not shown any great signs of nerves in the opening minutes here. Dangerous ball is goes in towards Phelan. Phelan gets inside a shot. John Hannity's watching close to go back out towards Paddy Dollar. Paddy Dollar is tackled by John Taylor. Goes back in towards Eamon Murphy. In there too is Nullard Reedy. Nullard shot out over the sideline and a line ball for Castletown. 
danger there for Port Leash for a couple of minutes, but they're well averted there by John Taylor. Oh, shot his own ball. Let me go as far as Noah Gregney. Ball breaks down towards the centre of the field. That was hurt to Brocken. The Brocken Riley in a good ball in towards Brian Bohan. Brian Bohan has Paul Bergen inside him. He's trying to get around his man. He's fouled by his man in there, Jerry Phelan. And the free into Port Leash. A chance maybe of the equaliser here. Foul there by Martin Phelan, the Castletown cornerback. Free for Brian Bohan, his first free in the county final. Chance for the second score of the game for Port Leash as he bends and lifts and strikes. Good shot from Brian. The umpire's flag goes up to the sides are level. We made about five minutes gone in the opening half. A bit of a breeze getting up as John Lyons pokes out in the Castletown goal from the edge of the square. Great ball, it'll drop towards Niall Rigney. And John Taylor, well cut by John Taylor. But John uh, seems to have slippery hands today. He's dropped the ball out of his hand again. But he does get a good ball in towards Mickey Sullivan. Mickey Sullivan in towards. Very dangerous ball in here for John Lyons. His first real test. Correct, grabs it. Sends it back out the field. There he goes on as the ball is cleared out. Well beyond centre field. But waiting for there, Cyril Duggan. Cyril sends a great ball back down the field. Down to Nidor as far as the cast down half back out there, Johnny Cuddy. Johnny Cuddy gets it towards David Cuddy. It's still David Cuddy going solo and about to be tackled. Ball's going out, dangerous ball towards Paddy Dollar. Paddy Dollar trying to make room. Gets it back towards David Cuddy. David Cuddy is tackled as he was about to shoot something, but David Cuddy shoots it over the bar. Down and regained the lead. Six minutes into the half, a point by David Cuddy took the pass from the cousin Johnny. Ball dropped out towards Eamon Fenley and Eamon Kerwin. Kerwin gets the better of it. Out towards Finton Cuddy. Finton Cuddy trying to get room to swing. Gets a dangerous ball in towards Pat Phelan, but in there too is Brian Murphy. Brian Murphy trying to get round. Good work by Murphy. Gets a good ball out towards Eamon Fenley. Eamon Fenley is beaten. In towards Dennis Gorman. In towards Finton Cuddy. Dangerous ball going into Pat Phelan. Shot down out towards the end line and wide. Castledown's third wide of the half. A sneaky effort there from Pat Phelan. They just skimmed the outside of the post stone wide. The score remains. Two points for Castledown. Two points for Port Leisha. <laughs> the referee blows his whistle for a foul there on the Castledown man, but he's going to have words here with uh, Billy Bohan because there seems to be an injury here to the Port Leash captain. Liam Bergen and uh, Billy Bohan was looking for attention there for Liam Bergen. Pull to be taken by John Hannafin in the Port Leach goal. He'll drop it down towards Niall Rigney. But well cut by David Cuddy, certainly having the better of Niall Rigney here in the opening half as the ball drops in the Finn Sullivan. There too is Sir Duggan goes back towards Dennis Garman. Dennis Garman sends it out of the inline, cast it down his fourth wide. The score remains three points to two in favour of the Castle Town seeking their first ever Leash Senior Hurling title, or Leash seeking their, their 11th. Their last one achieved back in 1991. They've been losing finals two years since. Ball poked out towards Johnny Sullivan and Liam Bergen. John Sullivan gets the better out towards Dennis Gorman. Dennis Gorman out towards John Taylor. John Taylor leaves it behind him, goes back, tries to get a second time. But still John Taylor and Paddy Cuddy, Finton Cuddy with the ball. Back towards uh, Paddy Cuddy, Paddy Cuddy shot, blocked down by Eamon Murphy. Back towards Dennis Gorman though, back towards John Taylor. John Taylor sends a good relief in Pierce, he's going to go very near the side. He'll be kept in play though by Brian Bohan, knocked out though by Martin Phelan. Line ball for Port Leisha from 45 metres out from the Castletown goal. Uh, line ball for and John Sullivan, not too happy with that decision, but Anthony Stapleton, the linesman, adamant that the ball had gone out off a Castletown defender on the line ball will be taken by Niall Rigney from about 45 metres out from the Castletown goal. Oh, 
And I'm reading a chance here of the equaliser. Up it comes. A lovely cut from line, but there's tailing away out, out over the end line and wide. The score remains. Castle down three points, Portlaoise at two points. A good effort there by Niall Rigney, tailed out over the end line, and John Lyons puck out into Castle Down goal. John Lyons dropping it beyond midfield towards Eamon Kirwan and Eamon Fenley. Eamon Fenley gets the better to go back towards David Cuddy, knocked away from him though, but it'll go back towards the brother Paul. Paul towards Dennis Gone, beaten by Dave, by Eamon Murphy, but it's still gone. Goes back towards John Taylor. John Taylor that tries to hand pass it dangerously across. It'll go to the danger man Pat Phelan. He'll try to get around. Brian Murphy sends a low ball in towards the full farm. He throws it in on the sort of danger and here's goes to Paddy Dollar. A chance for Dollar to shot and a goal! A goal by Paddy Dollar. For a dreadful mistake by John Taylor. As he hand passed that ball across the square. It went to Pat Phelan. He went it back towards uh, Paddy Dollar. And the young Russian Paddy made no mistake. And Castledown kick. A four-point lead in the early stages of the Leeds Senior Hurling Championship. One goal and three points to two points. And certainly John Hannafy had no chance when that ball came in from Paddy Dollard. Ball broken out over the sideline. Line ball for Portlaoise. And uh, anxious moments here. Portlaoise mentors on the sideline. Ball from Nile Rigney, the last one tailed out over the sideline, he was, but he's a bit farther out this time. This one is not as good as the goes towards past Paul Cudiga. And well cleared out towards the sideline on the far side. Damon Murphy's still trying to make it, he will be tackled. Goes to another population manager, Barry Kearns. Brock and Riley's in there as well. Cast down many there is Eamon Kerwin, Eamon Kerwin sends a long run even clears, way up towards Paddy Dollar. A man that got that goal, tackled by Noel Grigney, well blocked up by Noel Grigney. Kept in play by Noel, but not set out over the sideline as he slipped to the ground, ported his knee, and the free, a line ball in for Castletown from about 40 metres out, and David Cuddy a chance to stretch the Castletown lead still further. David Cuddy with the line ball, sends a great ball in and straight over the ground. Caught by David Cuddy. <laughs> 17 minutes gone. Castletown leading, 1-4 to 2 points. But he's yet to get into this game and not looking like it. Ball breaks around centre field, referee blows his whistles and awards a free to Port Leisha in the middle of the field. Niall Rigney to take her. Niall Rigney bends and lifts and strips into low ball in, but out over the head of Nicky Sullivan, and out over the end line and wide. Four remains, Castletown 1 4. Port Leash at two points in the Leash Senior Hauling final. Played in ideal conditions here at Party Vogue. And John Lyons, who hasn't been very busy so far, except from the odd puck out, pucking out in the Castletown goal. He's pucking a great ball beyond centre field and causing problems for the Port Leash half back line. Foul on the Port Leash man John Taylor there as he tried to clear that ball and the referee has blown his whistle. The free out to be taken by Cyril Duggan, the Port Leash full back. Cyril Duggan pucks it well beyond the middle of the field, dropping it down towards the corner, towards Jerry Phelan. Jerry Fielding keeps it in play over there. Mickey Sullivan's out there as well, but the ball's gone out over the side then. And a line ball for Bayon Koshlan. The 
the line ball to be taken by Jerry Phelan from about 30 metres out from his own goal. Cuts a good ball, but right in front is John Taylor. John Taylor shot left down by David Cuddy. Goes back towards David Cuddy and John Taylor again. In there too is Eamon Murphy, but David Cuddy sets in the great ball in towards uh, Finn Arna Sullivan. Finn Arna Sullivan, but there's the Nullag Rigney. Nullag Rigney cuts a good ball out over the sideline. A line ball for Castletown are on the halfway line. And David Cuddy to take this line ball. He cut the last one over the bar. A chance uh, to. Uh, for he has left it in fact to John Cuddy. John Cuddy cuts it across the middle of the field. In there, Zayman Murphy. Zayman Murphy knocks it only as far as Liam Bergen. Liam Bergen, Leash captain, trying to get something going here. Tackled by Dennis Gorman, but he gains a good ball down towards the corner. He's looking for the full forward. In there, the brother Paul. Paul has Brian Bohan gone inside him. Back towards Liam Bergen. Liam Bergen a shot. And Liam Bergen a point for Corfish. A good point by Liam Bergen. take the puck out as the breeze begins to pick up here. It's slightly favouring Castletown in the opening half as John Lyons puts a great ball well beyond centre field. Out towards Eamon Fenley. Out there too is Niall Rigging. Shot blocked down by David Cuddy. Niall goes back. Tried to get out along the ground. Goes back towards Liam Burton. Liam Burton and Johnny Sullivan. Johnny Sullivan doesn't knock it very far away. Goes back towards Eamon Fenley. Eamon Fenley trying to keep it from going out over the sideline. Eamon Fenley knocks it out over the sideline. And a line ball for Castletown. <laughs> Thomas Sullivan with a line ball just inside the Portage half the field. Johnny cuts a low ball in towards Dennis Gorman and Eamon Murphy. Murphy gets there first. It might come back towards Johnny Sullivan. Into a back towards Eamon Fenning. The man knocked it out over the line. Come back towards a. Eamon Curran, Curran trying to keep it in play, goes back towards Vincent Cuddy, tackled there by Des Rigney, goes to the ground and a 3-2 for Castletown. This will be taken by Paul Cuddy. Cyril Duggan sends a long relieving fair. The line drop goes first. Johnny Sullivan and Paul Cuddy. Johnny Sullivan gets there first. Back down by Eamon Fenley. Doesn't get it very far. He's, he's beaten by Eamon Kerwin. Goes back towards Eamon Kerwin. Eamon Kerwin very near the side and beats Des Ridney. Goes in towards Finan and Sullivan. Finan hasn't been much in the game so far. He takes a shot out over the end line and the fifth wide of the game for Castletown. The score remains 1 4 to 3 points in favour of a boys in blue. Appearing in their first ever leash final. Winners of the intermediate title back in 1993, defeating Van the Kill. Team is Pat Hoban replacing the Gartman Barry Kearns. Ball breaks towards Des Rigney. First good catch by Des. He's fouled as he tries to clear it out. And Barry Kearns gone off and replaced by the former Balafin player Pat Hoban. That seems to be gone in centre half forward in direct replacement for Kearns. Paul Cody having an outstanding opening 20 minutes. Now Rigney, a uh, chance here from a free from the middle of the field, bends and lifts and strikes. Will he drop it in or out over the end line? A good point by Niall Rigney. <laughs> uh, 
That'll bring you a point in 23 minutes. Making the score 1 4 to 4 points in favour of Castletown. John Lyons to puck out. Great puck out by John Lyons. He's going to drop towards Noel Rigney, the corner back in there too, is Paddy Dollar, the corner forward. Goes out towards uh, David Cuddy. Two players go to the ground, referee says play on. Stalemate out there on the far side as the ball goes out over the sideline, out for, over, off the Castletown man. A line ball for Port Leash from their own 40 metre line. And the referee going to have a word with Dennis Gorman of Castletown for a. Or is it Paddy Dollard? And the name of Paddy Dollard seems to be going into the referee's notebook, the first Castletown name in a senior hurling final. Will be taken by line ball, taken by Nullock, one of the three Rigney brothers, in towards the middle of the field, in towards uh, Liam Burton, the captain. Liam sends a good ball in towards the full forward line. Uh, uh, referee spotted a foul there by the full back. Well spotted by uh, a foul there by PJ Cuddy on the Portisha full forward, Paul Bergen, and the free in for Brian Bohan. About 20 metres to the left of the post, 25 metres out from the goal. and Chance for Brian to reduce the deficit still further. Brian Bowen bends and lifts and strikes. The umpire puts up his hand and a point for Port Leisha. Ball dropping down around the middle of the field. In there is Eamon Fenley, Eamon Murphy. Ball goes to the fullback Cyril Duggan and Finon O'Sullivan. Finon knocks it out over the sideline. Out on. Cyril Duggan is certainly not happy with that decision and uh, a line ball for Castletown to be taken by David Cuddy. From about 20 metres out, David Cuddy cuts a low one in towards Pat Phelan. But in there too, with Sir Logan back towards David Cuddy a shot from David Cuddy a point. <laughs> Castellone increased their lead, 1 5 to 5 points as we approach the half time whistle. Ball dropping around centre field towards Eamon Fenley, beaten by Eamon Curran, goes in towards Dennis Garman. Dennis Garman, John Taylor comes out. Here's a good ball for Port Leisha. Down towards the Brian Bohan, but wet for this Martin Phelan. Martin Phelan right for the, out towards the middle of the field. Out towards the centre half back, Eamon Murphy for Port Leisha. Out there too is Paddy Cuddy. Out there is <laughs> Port Leisha men out towards Brock and Riley. Not much in this game so far. Out towards John Taylor. John Taylor way down into the corner looking for Liam Bergen. Liam Bergen gets ahead of Johnny Sullivan, the captain. And uh, the two captains playing in direct opposition as the ball goes down towards Paul Burton and PJ Cuddy. Paul Burton tries to get inside. Good work by PJ Cuddy and out for a 65. Just took the ball away from the stick of Paul Bergen out over the end line and a 65 metre free for Port Leisha. Niall Rigney with the free, 65 metre free. Reduces the deficit again with that point from a 65 metre free. One five to six points. Coming close to half time. out for Castletown, 45 metres out from his own goal.
obviously the very notion that our most recent representatives, Cyril Duggan, John Taylor and Pat Critchley, are obviously otherwise engaged today. So representing, in beginning with, representing Leash in 1993 and 1994 was long striking defender from Ratdowney, Phil Maher. family of six brothers who have gained given great service to Lee Hurling, our 1992 representative, Joe Dollard. <laughs> Playing with Lancer in 1985, 1986 and 1987, a tight corner back, John Bahan of Fort Lee. <laughs> 1984 representative was Tom Flynn from the Hops who cannot be with us today because he's in the All Ireland Firefighters Competition and wish him well. A powerhouse at centre back in 1984 was John Delaney of A reliable and accurate free taker in 1982 was Dollarman Martin Brophy. This man played in 82, 83, 84, 85, 1 in 88, 89 and 91. One of the greatest modern football was P.J. Cody of Cameras. <laughs> Another Cameras representative, Martin Cody, can of with us today, but he represented us in 81, 83 and 84. A hurling stylist at halfback, Played for Leicester in 1981, Kilcock the man Christy Jones. <laughs> Cameras was again represented in 1980 by Mick Carroll, who was described as being as solid as a rock at fullback. Mick Carroll. <laughs> a Railway Cup winner in 1979 with Leicester, the scoring machine from Cameras, Frank Keenan. Played for Leinster in 78, 79, 80, 81, 82 and 83. Started the victorious battle in the kill team last night, Michael Walsh. <laughs> a solid defender with Calvin County, a winner of three Railway Cup medals in 73, 74 and 75. Also played in 76, Mick Bahan of Watani. And the man today. A great goalkeeper of cameras representing Leash in 72, 73, 78 and 79, Johnny Carroll. <laughs> this man is described as a prince of centre, centre field players, a representative in 72 and 74, Phil Dillon of Tonsley. <laughs> Winner of Leash senior holding title in 1964, played for Leicester in 66, 68 and 69, Colin Hillman, Paddy O'Mahony. In 1966, another Colin Hillman represented Leash. First caught in the Paddy's, Larry O'Mahony. In 1965, Jim Holohan, who can't be with us today, represented us. Jim Colin Holohan, from the Harvard. What can we say about the next band? Played for Leinster in 56, 57, 58, 60, 62, 63, 64, 65. Played in every line for Leinster, the great Christy O'Brien. <laughs> An excellent game in the All-Ireland of 1949, Lee White of Kilcotton. 1950. The Albanese clubs represented at Leinster level in 49 and 50 and in 1953 by Paddy Lawler. <laughs> Timmy Maher, who represented us in 53 and 55, kind of with us today. So next we have a father and son connection, Billy Bahan. <laughs> Another man described as a son of the rocket fullback, Andy Dunn of <laughs> 1950, 53, 54, and 55. In 1950 and 52, 
the Royal Burst Band, a centre back, Tom Byrne. One of the greatest goalkeepers he's ever seen, the famous goalkeeper from the 49 team, the great Timmy Fitzpatrick of Phil Cotton. Way out to Port Leash to be taken by fullback Cyril Duggan. He dropped it certainly the breeze affecting this ball. Drops it well in towards the full forward and in towards Paul Bergen. Ball swept away though from Paul Bergen. They come out towards John Taylor. John trying to control it and John is shot. And John Taylor a point. <laughs> 31 minutes gone. Just a point between the sides. Castledown won five. Port Leach has seven points. And Paddy Dollard seems to be gone in full forward. With Finn Sullivan out in the right corner. Marking Noel Rigney. Eamon Murphy trying to get it out. Won't get it very far. It's gone out over the sideline. The linesman has indicated the line ball for Port Leach. 45 metres out from their own goal. Gone back to take it is Noel Rigney. One five to seven points in the Leash Senior Hurling final. Low scoring game so far, and Castletown certainly not overawed by the occasion. That vital goal by Paddy Dollard midway through the first half still keeps him just ahead of Port Leisha. Great ball from Noel Rigney. He's trying to feed it up to the far corner towards Brain Bohan, but it's gone out over the sideline. And this time we line ball for Port Leisha, but for Castletown about 40. Five metres out from their goal. And might be taken out there by Johnny Sullivan, captain and trainer of this Castletown outfit. Beating Tamras in the semi-final. And the first team from the area since 1959 to qualify for a senior final. Ball drops out. Around the middle of the field. Out there is Des Rigney and the brother Niall. Good ball in towards the full forward and was waiting for it out there on his own is Jerry Phelan for Castletown. Good ball by Jerry Phelan. Out towards Noel Brigney. Castletown to be taken by Pat Phelan. Bends and lifts and strikes, and this time Pat sends it 
Over the bar for a point for Castletown, one six to seven points. Thought the umpire hesitated there for a moment, but up the flag went and Castletown increased their lead to two points. One goal and six to seven points. Ball dropping around the centre of the field towards Paul Cuddy. In there is the brother David. Beats uh, Niall Rigney, having the better of the matters here at centre field. Hops the ball off the ground, still going solo. About to be tackled by Rigney. Gets in the ball into the corner, in towards Pat Finn. Dangerous balls to come to the cross, but waiting for the same Murphy. It'll beat him and Murphy. Go back out towards Paddy Dollar. Paddy Dollar taking a look at the goal mark. Going solo in, lose the ball, gets it back a second. Gets it back in towards Finton Cuddy. Or is it a sub that came on and out over the end line and wide? A sub on the Castletown team. It looks to me like Sir Cuddy. Indeed it is. Sir Cuddy has come into the attack. He might have he might have got a score there, but John King is coming in. Uh, uh, John Taylor still not, not fully recovered from that clash of heads with big Noel Rigney there after just a minute ago. And John just looked at all happy. Ball poked out well beyond centre field. Breaks towards Nile Rigney. Nile Rigney's beaten though by Eamon Carroll. Eamon the man that Captain Castellon here in the Intermediate Top Final. In 83, ball breaks down to the sub. Cyril. Cyril pulls first time but out over the sideline. Cyril who's come on in place of Dennis Gorman at half time. At centre half forward. John Taylor is going to take this line ball. Uh, John suffering from a knee injury there. Bandaged up by Ned Murphy and uh, seems to be alright at the moment. But still not playing the sparkling horn we're used to from John Taylor as he takes this line ball, puts it around centre field towards Rigney, but tapped by David Cuddy. Hand passes it in towards Finon. Finon on a solo run. It's still going solo. About to take a shot, but well back up. He's beat Noel Rigney, the ambulance driver. And out comes Noel. He sent a long, well even clearance. He had an outstanding game in the halves in the semi final. He's playing well today. Out towards the far corner, towards Brian Bohan, but got out over the sideline. But a great block down by Nullock Rigney. As Finano Sullivan made his way towards the goal and cleared well out to the far side. Line ball will be taken by John O'Sullivan, the Castletown captain. Dropping around the middle of the field. Going to break towards Eamon Fenley along the ground. Out towards Liam Bergen. Liam trying to get room to swing. Tried to hand pass out. Instead, so outside the dummy. Trying to get in towards the brother Paul. A full forward Paul trying to get around PJ Cuddy. Won't be easy. Trying to get. But PJ Cuddy beats him. Comes out along the ground. Doesn't get it very far. Doesn't get it far enough because he's driven out farther by Johnny Cuddy. Johnny Cuddy. But was break, the attack broken up by Niall Rigney. Niall Rigney is fouled by Sir Cuddy and the free to Port Leash in the middle of the field. Niall Rigney uh, to take this free from the middle of the field. John Taylor still receiving attention and I see Billy Bohan and the Port Leash mentors having consultation. I wonder if John is going to be left on. It'd be a huge loss to Port Leash if he were to go off. But Niall Rigney with the free. He's side trailing by two points. One six to seven. Niall sends a low one and sends it over the bar. Good point by Niall Rigney. We're now playing 40 minutes of this Leach Hurling final. Castletown cling to a one point lead, 1 6 to 8 points. That great goal by Paddy Dollar at midway through the first half. Ball going to drop towards Finon, but cut by Big Nolo Grigley. Coming out, playing well, Gun Solo. Sends it up towards Big Paul Bergen, the most dangerous forward in the Port Leach team, arguably. A chance of the equaliser from Paul is shot. And a point by Paul Bergen. But Noel Rigney was the man who created that point from his own position at cornerback and the sides are level 41 minutes into the game. It's one six to nine points. John Lyons 
Pucked that out to the wind, doesn't seem to affect John's puck out because he's pucked his time in the second half as he did the first. Emmy Murphy out there, out over the side, and a line ball for Ballon Cashlawn to be taken by David Cuddy, the midfield player. David Cuddy with the line ball. Doesn't go very far, but it does go as far as Eamon Curran. Blocked down by Eamon Fenley. Fenley tries to get it up, but won't come up for him. Eamon, a member of the junior team that won the title two years ago, himself and Barry Cairns. In towards Finana Sullivan. Finana shot. Low ball, dangerous ball. In towards the full forward. In there with John Taylor. John Taylor only gets his first circle. Ball knocked away from Cyril by Eamon Murphy. Goes back towards Pat Phelan. Phelan a shot. And a point by Pat Phelan. Down go a point ahead again. One seven to nine points, an opportunist point by Pat Phelan. Had a great game against Cameras. What a goal, what a goal to do today for Castletown. Ball going to drop around the centre of the field, but instead waiting for it all on his own is Jerry Phelan. Jerry used to play out around the centre of the field, dropping the lovely ball down towards Finanas, but there again is Big Nano Grindy. Go after it and send Paul Fisher Tekken. Great ball up towards Paul Dirk, and the last goal up, Paul got a real point. But this time the ball's clearly out by PJ Cuddy to pull back. One out there, John Sullivan, the Castletown captain, out there the side then. Here's the shortest ball down towards Amy Carroll. Not the way from Raymond. There's Corvisha man on the ground is Des Rigney. Des Rigney tries to recover. Going to come back here towards uh, Johnny Taylor. John Taylor along the ground. Beats Hodgie Cuddy. Great ball towards the Brock and Riley. Brock and Riley, but in the third, Jerry Field, all in his own. Out over the side and a line ball for Castletown. We see a sub coming on the Portisha team. Is it Ivan Bourne? Will he come in a half back? John Taylor mustn't be happy if Ivan Bourne is coming on. Do I see another sub coming on the Castletown team? It looks to me like Declan Delaney. Or is it Jerry Gohan? Ivan Bourne comes in, is John Taylor the man to go off? Or is it Mick O'Sullivan there? Mick O'Sullivan seems to be going off, he didn't hit too many balls. Playing against his native club and Mick O'Sullivan has been substituted here 10 minutes into the second half, replaced by Ivan Bourne. There's also a sub on the Castletown team. It appears to me to be Declan Delaney. He's gone in to mark Brock and Riley. Ball goes to a Portation man in there too is Eamon Kerwin. Eamon Kerwin. Ivan Bourne tries to get it out, but he's knocking it the wrong way. In towards the full back, in towards Sir Dogan. Put the pressure on him, go towards Finano Sullivan. The referee has blown his whistle for a foul on Finano Sullivan and a free in for Castletown. Number 18, Declan Delaney replacing number two, Jerry Fielding on the Castletown team. Number 18 for number two. John Taylor going up to attack and Pat Phelan with a free. Chance to increase the Castletown lead. Bending and lifting and striking and this time it's gone straight over the bar. Good point by Pat Phelan. 1-8 to 9 points. Almost 15 minutes gone in the second half. Dollard coming out to mark Ivan Byrne a bit later because Ivan's going to catch it all on his own. A chance to set up something here for Port Leach, but it's going in towards now in towards uh, Port Leach, but unmarked. This is the first thing goes back, but drives it out over the end line and wide. Bad work by the Brock and Riley. Declan uh, Delaney comes in at right corner back. He's marking Brock and Riley with John Taylor gone a half forward, marking Johnny Cuddy, and the man to go off is Jerry Phelan on the Castletown team. Number 10, Parry Cuddy on the cast down team. Ball breaking around the middle of the field. Here comes Castletown again. Good ball throws it towards the soap, but the referee has blown his whistle for a foul there by Eamon Fenley on a Castletown player with a David Cuddy.
two points between the sides as we uh, enter the final quarter of the Leash Senior Hurling Championship. Matty Cuddy comes on the Castleton team in place of Cody Cuddy. Pat Phelan with the free. Bending, lifting, and striking at this time. It's straight as a die. Head over the bar, point by Pat Phelan. He's third in a row. And with 13 minutes left for play, Port Leash trail by three points. One nine to nine points. Big Nile Rigney in towards uh, Pat Hoban. Pat Hoban hasn't made much of an impact since his arrival here. Uh, in the first half, replacing Pat Kearns, Ivan Byrne, along the ground, towards John Taylor, unmarked. John won't be unmarked for much longer. Sends in a great ball, but this time there's a tail on it, going out over the end line. Wide, the score remains. 1-9 for Castletown, 9 points for Port Leisha, and their forwards certainly not uh, availing of all their opportunities today. Castletown playing to that one goal lead, that crucial goal by Paddy Dollard. Ball drops around the middle of the field. Out towards Finton Cuddy. Finton tries to hold on to it. Beaten ball goes back towards Eamon Murphy. Eamon Murphy only as far up as David Cuddy. David Cuddy loses first time. Goes back, gets it a second time. Tackled by Ivan Byrne. These two lads played together on the leash of the firm side. And, uh, the referee has blown his whistle for a late tackle there by Ivan Byrne. Across the hand of David Cuddy and he's awarded the free from where the ball lands. I did say these fellas played together in the leash of the firm final. in a chance of his fourth point in a row could put four points between the sides bending and lifting and striking a perfect shot from Pat Phelan and a point <laughs> ten minutes left for play four points between the sides castle down the leaders Oh, breaks out towards uh, David Cuddy again. Out towards Eamon Kerwin. Kerwin going solo. About to be tackled by Ivan Byrne. Drop to the ground by Ivan Byrne with the centre referee says play on. Ball breaks out to a poor fisherman. Beaten down by Finton Cuddy out there. Johnny Sullivan. The referee says play on. Ball out towards Paddy Dollar trying to get room to swing. Takes his shot. A great ball from Paddy Dollar. But the umpire looks up for points from Paddy Dollar. Nine points, five points between the sides. For fisherman John Hannafy pucks out. Out towards Pat Hoban and Paul Cuddy. Ball breaks out towards uh, Finan is out now around the half hour line. Takes a look at post. A shot from Finan and out over the end line and wide from Finan O'Sullivan. John Hannafy in a hurry to puck out. About nine minutes left in this leash hurling final. Cast down leading by five points. One goal and eleven to nine points. Ball going to drop towards Pat Hoban and Paul Cuddy. Hoban trying to get in his hand, won't succeed. Both towards John Taylor. Out there too is Eamon Fenley for Portis. Eamon trying to set up an attack here, half block down. Ball going to drop in towards Paul Burton. Paul Burton and in there too is the sub, Declan Delaney. Declan Delaney and PJ Cuddy. Ball comes back out towards uh, Eamon Fenley. Well controlled by Fenley. Tries to get across the goal, not if anybody waiting for it. He's really Burton, the captain. But he's going to be beaten by Johnny Sullivan, the corner of Castledown captain. Ball gone very near the side then will be a line ball for Port Leash, about 40 metres out from their own goal. A line ball to be taken by Niall Rigney. Port Leash midfielder. Put it in a low ball in towards the full forward line. Well taken by, by Paul Cuddy. Paul Cuddy gets it back out of John O'Sullivan. John O'Sullivan only as far as Ryan Rigney. Rigney takes a look at the goal. He takes a shot. 
And this time it's Ken Oldenar at point for Niall Rigney. Four points between the sides again. But uh, time ticking away here. We make it about six, seven minutes left in the game. Pat O'Neill going in to have a word there with uh, the umpire. Have a word there with the Castletown official. Woman, another sub on the far side. Is it the big cheddar plunket? We're not sure who it is, but or is that Martin Cuddy, the former Shannon Oh, Harlow? The man to go off, I think, is the man who came on. Big Pat Hogan of Ballot, formerly Ballot Finn. And a word here for the referee. I think it might be Martin Cuddy who's come on the Portisha team. Or is it John Gleason? John Gleason going into the defence. Will Sir Duggan or Eamon Murphy come to attack? Gleason, the man that's gone into the defence. Had Hugan gone off? Ball breaking around the middle of the field. Johnny Sullivan out there on his own. The Castle Town captain. Ball goes away from them. Comes back and gets it the second time. In there is Eamon Fanny. In there too is Nile Rigney and Eamon Murphy. There's Rigney. Eamon Murphy controls it. Gets a good ball in towards John Taylor. John Taylor up in the tank now. Trying to control this ball. Well done by John Taylor. But he doesn't get it very far because it's going towards far. Paul Cuddy. Goes to a poor man, Liam Bergen. Liam Bergen takes a look at the goal. In towards John Lines. John Lines controls it. Breaks it on the ground. Tries to pick it up. Staying right in there, still John Lines with the ball. He's still in position, but he's cleared well out the field by a cast down defender. Dropped around the centre of the field. Caught there by uh, and a shot and a wide ball for Portisha. Bad wide there from Portisha, man, was an Eamon Fanley. The score remains 111 to 10 points, four points between the sides. Cast down the clear leader. John Gleason are facing number 17, Pat Bowman, and the Portisha team. Six minutes left for play in this leash hurling final. The hope to be taken. Dropping down around the half back line in there is Eamon Murphy. Tries to get away from Finano Sullivan. That won't be easy. Stalemate in there as the ball goes out over the sideline. Line ball for Castletown to be taken by David Cuddy about 50 metres out from uh, the Portisha goal. Ball dropping dangerously in towards the goal mode, out for a 65. shot from Paul Cuddy from the 65 metre free goes out over the end line and wide. Five minutes left for play in the Leash Hurling final. Passed down leading by four points. The ball dropped out around the middle of the field. Des Rigney is in there. John Taylor is in there. John Taylor gets it in towards the goal mouth. Paul Durbin trying to get in towards the goal to lean. In there towards John Lyons. John Lyons controls it. Good work by John Lyons. Out towards the unmarked day. Declan Delaney. A great ball from Delaney. He dropped it down around the far corner, knocked away from Muller Greedy. In towards Paddy Dollard. Foul on uh, John Gleason there by the full forward and a free out for Port Aisha.
ball cleared out, not very far. Paul Cuddy gets it out along the far side. Great ball out towards Fintan Cuddy. Ran out over the sideline. Line ball for Port Leisha. But time ticking away here. We'd make it about two and a half minutes left for play, maybe injury time. But Port Leash trailing by four points and cast down clinging to a four point lead. And a side trained by and captained by John Sullivan, looking very likely winning the O'Keefe Cup for the very first time. As Nile Ridley cuts this line ball in from under the stand on the far side. The side have yet to go or score a goal and they almost need two at this stage to win this game. Paul dropped in a shot. Oh, well saved there by Cast on the and kept out by John Lane, but all number 65. And uh, two minutes left for play. Now he needs to drop this one in once again. But it looks very much as if Castletown's name is on this O'Keefe Cup. Niall Rigney bends and lifts and strikes and this time he settles for the point. One eleven to 11 points. Two minutes, less than two minutes left in this leash hurling final. A goal between the sides. John Lane's yet to concede a goal. Son of Jimmy, who uh, captained Camaros to a hurling title back in 1973, played with Cudda in 1959 against against Camaros. And Camaros won their first ever title. Ball out towards Eamon Murphy. Eamon Murphy has played consistently well in the Port Leash half back line. Takes a good ball way up into the attack. Going out towards uh, Paul Bergen. It's well taken by the substitute, Declan Delaney. A lovely ball out towards Clinton Cuddy. Clinton Cuddy sends a great ball down towards John Gleason. Taken by Gleason. Gleason tries to control it. Doesn't get it very far. Only as far as Finan O'Sullivan. A chance for the insurance ball. Finan O'Sullivan. Finana Sullivan a point in the 59th minute. His first score of the game, but it could be the most crucial one as his brother John picks up the ball in the half back line. Sends the ball way out to the far side of the field, down towards Nullig Green. Well caught by Nullig, the star of the Port Leash defence this year. Up towards Leanberg and the Port Leash captain. Trying to get something going here. Time is running out. Out in towards the brother Paul. Trying to get around PJ Cuddy, fouled by PJ Cuddy. And uh, well, Castle won't mind that because we make a time up on the stopwatch. There's four points. But between the sides, 112 to 11 points. And Castletown looking very like winning their first ever Leash Senior Hurling title. Will they go for the goal or will Niall Rigney settle for the point and hope that there might be a couple of minutes for injury time? Up he comes. Niall Rigney bends, lifts, strikes, he's showing low. Shot well saved by Johnny Sullivan. John Ryan's in the Castle Town goal. Comes back out to the captain, John Sullivan. Clears it way down beyond the middle of the field. Goes towards Ivan Byrne. Ivan Byrne is beaten. A line ball for Castle Town. Referee is looking at his watch. There's not an awful lot of time left. There mightn't be any time left, but the linesman now has changed his decision. He's going to give this line ball to Port Leash and John Taylor to take it. It did appear to be a Castle Town ball from here, but John Taylor to take the line ball. Puts it in, across the goal mount, dangerously in, kept in play, but it's gone out over the end line and wide. Ball poked out towards the middle of the field by John Lyons. The referee still looking at his watch, there can't be enough of time left. A well caught though by Niall Rigney and he's fouled over the middle of the field by Fintan Cuddy. Free to be quickly taken by Niall Rigney. There are four points behind, they'll need to score twice. There's a player on the ground, he seems to be a Castletown man. Maybe it's just uh, delaying tactics here by Castletown. Uh, the referee gone in there to have a word with the, with the umpire. Time is up, injury time.
Niall Rigney with the free and he's getting advice over there from a fast down player but I'm sure Niall needs no help at this stage because he's either trailed by four points the referee tells him to bring the free up they have beaten Cameras, they have beaten Errol, they have beaten Burson Street. they're about to add it. the scalp of Portlaoise as the ball goes out over the end line and that's surely that the referee Pat O'Neill is looking at John Lyons he's telling him to cook it out but he seems to be calling for the ball and it's all over and Chris is down a one-relief singer holding title for the very first time for the terrific second half performance and a scoreline of Castletown, one goal and 12 points. For Fisha, 11 points. And now go on to represent Leash in the Leinster Club Championship. And we'll have a home game against the Wexford champions of Dinburn Town or Owl of the Bala sometime early in October. And they're captained by John O'Sullivan and also a trainer of the team, John Sullivan, whose brother Michael lined out in the Port Leisha team with his other brother Finon was a doubtful starter of the game lined out to score the vital point that put four points between the sides and give Castletown their very first leash title and what had come from, nine, from junior champions of 1992 to intermediate champions of 1993 beaten semi-finalists in 93 and 94 beaten quarter finalists in 93 beaten semi-finalists in 94 against Cameras Spore did come back for revenge defeated Cameras comprehensively by 11 points in the Leash hurling semi-final. After her, they had come back from the dead against Boris Nostri in earlier rounds. And come here today to defeat a gallant Port Leisha team who now have lost three Leash finals in the 90s. An unusual record for Port Leisha teams, but that's the way they, they lost them before. They lost them in 77. And they lost them in 61. And they lost them in 1980. And... <laughs>
John Sullivan, the captain of the victorious Castletown team, and uh, alongside him is the man who captained the team in '83 and gave '93, I suppose, gave them the right to compete at senior level, and gave a speech that we all thought would never end. But <laughs> congratulations to both of them and both of them are school teachers, so I'm sure they won't run out of words for a long, long time. John Sullivan, congratulations. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Uh, great victory, John. Great victory. Very, very hard game to play in. Like those. Um, a lot of hits going in there, a lot of shoulders going in, and uh, most of it was fair. But uh, you'd be exhausted after, it was a very, very tough game. But uh, our fitness told in the end, you know, we, we, were, we were able to recover quicker than they were. And I knew if we had our noses in front of 15 minutes to go, that we wouldn't be beaten, you know. Well, John, you couldn't really say that you came in surprised with a hard game. The semi-final was hardly too easy. No, the, the semi-final wasn't easy at all. The scoreboard t told a bit of a lie in, when the commerce came. Like, it looked as if we won the, that match easy, but the, the, only, the only difference between the teams was a couple of goals, you know. We always have a tough game at commerce. We always have a hard game. I think all the hard games that stood to us throughout the year, like, you know, we came through a very, very tough group with a tough semi-final. Port Leash came through very, very easy. You know, they only had Balakala. Um, I think the intermediate champions from last year, I, don't know, I think it was Ratneska, and then they had the Harps, quite easy victory as well. Like, we learned an awful lot more about ourselves coming into this game, and um, I think that stood to us on the day. It gave us a little bit of an edge as well, you know. Well, John, you had a double role. You were trainer and uh, also captain. Uh, we know the captain hasn't such a major role in hurling, no. particularly at club level, but um, was it hard to motivate these lads for the county final? Hardly. No, no, no. It was very, very easy to motivate them. Um, like once, once Castellan gets a sniff of a final at all, they'll always hurl well in it. And the main thing was to get them in there, you know. The big, the, the big one was, was the cameras game, but then again, like, there's nothing better to motivate a Castellan than a cameras jersey, I suppose. But getting into the final was very, very easy to motivate them. My own role as, tr as trainer, like, it, is, it, it, it was tough on me because like, you're trying to tell lads to do things and you have to do them yourself. And you're trying to concentrate on your own game and try and get the lads going as well. And it, it kind of affected me in, in challenge games and things like that. But on the day, I left, I left the, the other lads to do the talk and I just kept my own game, you know. Um. What was the feeling like um, during the week? Was there any nervousness? I mean, you were facing Port Leash and you were playing Port Leash and Port Leash and it was the first big occasion for the club probably since 1993 when they beat Bandekin in the intermediate final. Yeah, yeah well, uh, we've had three weeks since the semi-final. We took the first week off and then we trained like demons then from the Friday night of the, after the semi-final up, up until last week. And lads were really, really going hard in training. And it's only, I think, that our last night training, I think it was, what was it, Thursday night? Thursday night. Thursday night was a bit of an edge. Everybody was a bit on, on edge on, on Thursday night. It was a great mood in the camp up until then, but the nerves started setting on Thursday night, you know. But it was very easy. I just gave gave a few shouts and gave a few lads to kick up the backside and that sort of demo, you know. Well, what was it like in the dressing room before the game? 
very very calm. We like a lot of these fellas are used are used to finals. You know, we're not used to hurling senior finals in Leash, but we've fellas there who played all Ireland colleges finals, Fitzgibbon finals, under twenty one minor finals. Everybody, a lot of them have heard for Leash as well. So like we've all been there on the big stage before. We we haven't played in a county final at, at senior level, but we've all played in front of big crowds and big occasions. And I was surprised at how relaxed the lads were inside. In fact, we had to try and get them going inside because they were, they were too relaxed really we had to really kind of push them a little bit Similar game really to the semi-final against Cameras, a Paddy Dollard goal uh, midway through the first half was really what uh, built up a lead for Castletown but then Port Leach got a few points before half time, what did you feel at half time? Well when we got the goal I, I looked up at the scoreboard, it was 1-4 to, so it was one four to 2 points when we got the goal and I started practicing my speech <laughs> in my own head and it's only 20 minutes gone into the game and Port Leach threw a few points on the board then and I was getting worried again. I was practicing my, my speech. I was going to say to the Port Leach lads after the game in case they won. So there's different things going on in my head. But uh, we dug deep and I suppose we were lucky to be two points going up going in at half time. But uh, I said to the lads inside, we needed a few quick scores after half time. We didn't get them. Port Leach actually brought us back. I think it was level. But we got a few frees and Patrick Phelan doesn't miss frees. You know, he just doesn't miss them. And uh, that gave us a bit of a cushion again. And once we got four points up, and I knew, I knew they wouldn't come back at half then. Um... Where from now, Michael? Where from now? Well, we're going to celebrate for a while, and um, <laughs> we might work. We might work in a few weeks' time. But um, this Castletown team is going to go a long, long way. I, I said to Jack up there in Radio 3 that um, a lot of people are expecting Cast too much from Castletown. We're a very young team. We're only, I think, the average age is 22 or 3, and pe pe Leash people are putting pressure on us to win a county final. But we reckon that if it didn't come this year, it wouldn't be the end of the world. That we get it next year, maybe the year after. Now, we might never win another one. Who knows? But I, I'll tell you, we'll be around. We'll be around for six years. It's going to take some fair, a fair team to knock us off um, over the next six, seven years. And we're going to have a fair go at the Leinster Club Championship as well. We're going to take this week off and we're going to celebrate and we're going to drink. But back to work next Tuesday week and uh, we're going to have a fair go at the Leinster Championship then as well. Uh, just the last question. Can't let it pass. I know it has been overhyped up. The brother playing in the opposition. Yeah, like I said on Radio 3 there yesterday as well, I was, I'm just glad to see Mick back hurling. You know, he's... He's had a tough time with injury. He's been out for two years with, with his knees. I missed two years hurling with my back about five years ago, and I know what it's like to sit down on a sideline and watch, watch, watch your teammates play while well, you can do nothing about it. And I'm just glad that he's back hurling. He's probably one of the best hurlers this county has ever produced. And uh, I was a bit, uh, well, it was disappointing that he's wearing a different jersey than mine today, but um, it would have been great to have him wearing a Castletown jersey, but maybe he'll see the error of his ways and he might come back to us. Who knows? <laughs> Will he be invited back? He'll be invited back. He's always welcome. He's always welcome in a Castletown jersey. Uh, finally, Michael, or uh, John, we listened to you yesterday evening on Radio 3. Uh, I thought by the sound of you that the brother, Finan, would be out here in a wheelchair. Who, uh, where did you get the water in the meantime? Uh, they, say, they say if you're going to tell a lie, Patrick, you might, you might as well tell a big one, because nobody would believe a small one, so I said I'd, I'd tell a big one. John, we'll let you go before you tell any more. Thank you. i just have a couple of words here with Eamon Kerwin. Eamon was the captain here uh, two years ago in the intermediate That's final. I still remember it well. And I... I thought then that maybe we'd make the breakthrough last year and I must say last year's semi-final here the cameras beat us and I was a bit downhearted after because we didn't, I don't think we performed to our potential in the day. But I, I, like John said there, I, I think it was crucial that we came back this year. I mean, I know we're a young side, but people have put us under pressure to actually come out and deliver on the big day. And we're under pressure there today from our supporters and if we had lost today there was a chance that the team could disband. I mean, when John and when this team was growing up, Castletown had a kernel of another great team, but it, it, it didn't actually make a breakthrough. It won an intermediate title and faded out. And there was a chance that we could fade out here today. But credit to a couple of lads today there, I think. Patrick Phelan missed a couple of chances in the second in the first half. But when he got a couple of crucial frees in the second half, by golly he stuck them over the bar. I think young David Cuddy there for a young fella who's done an awful lot of hurling had a great game. And I think I was never as glad to see Finan Sullivan pick up a ball down there in that corner and stick it between the post to put his four points clear. And the defence hung on there like Trojans in the last couple of balls. But you can rest assured there won't be too many lads in Betting Castle down at three or four tomorrow morning. Well, Eamon, um, you played Cameras in the O'Brady Cup final of last year. Uh, that was only played uh, two or three months ago and you were far from impressive then because they were far from impressive still to beat you by a couple of goals. Uh, yeah, was uh, there a great improvement after that? I can't say there was a great improvement after that. But we said to ourselves after that game that we were fed up giving away two and three goals, soft goals, and giving ourselves a mountain to climb early on in the game. And coming up to the Cameras game, our full-back line was switched. 
hither and, and thither all over the place. But well, whatever happened on the day, it kept sealed shut. And again today, it managed to keep out the goals. But it was leaky goals. I think was was ruining us for a long time. You've conceded no goals to in the semi-final and the final. That's yeah, a great achievement. Lions will be a happy man about that, all right. And so will the full back line. I mean, they got a lot of criticism from others and from ourselves at times. But fair play to them. They come up trumps in the day, and they can all feel very, very proud of themselves. And I see people here behind the camera here. They should all smile, and they're well entitled to smile, and they should keep smiling for many months to come. Were you worried at any time, Eamon, when Port Leach drew level midway through the second half? Well, not necessarily when Port Leach drew level in the second half. I was worried before the game and at half time because our dressing room was just a little bit, a little bit, I don't know, subdued. I mean, we were bubbling all day against cameras, but we were a little bit subdued today. But I think the crucial thing was. After the Port Leash drew level, we made a couple of runs at the Port Leash defence, got a couple of fouls, and Patrick Phelan, well, he settled us down. I mean, Castle Dunheims in the past have collapsed when it's been put up to them. But today, we got a couple of frees, got our noses in front, and just managed to get to creep four points clear as a thing from three, and managed to sort of hitch back to that when we were in trouble. Uh, do you think that the Paddy Dollard factor has been a huge influence at Castle Dunheim? Well, what can I say? I mean... He's played, I think it's four competitive games, three competitive games since he came back. He played against, I think it was Errol and Boris in the early rounds. He was a bit rusty after being, being off for a long time himself. But he came out here against Cameras, caused a lot of trouble and got a wonderful goal just when we needed it. And today he scored another one. And it's, it's added a good buzz in the training field that he's been there, he's back to us and we're now heading back towards full strength. And who knows, maybe... Those that have gone, maybe they'll be back again. I don't know. But we have the kernel of a good team. Let's hope we can keep it together. I've seen Paddy with a planning permission for cameras. Is it true that you've objected to that? Have no clue. Deny all knowledge. <laughs> Didn't hear. You would know more about that than me, Pat. Eamon, I'll let you go now before Thank you commit you yourself much. to start telling lies like John Sullivan. Thank, Thank you very much, Thank Eamon. Thank you. As players, we like to say one big thanks as well to them. Um, to you, the supporters, you've been with us. We're taking pain. You've been with us when days weren't so good. You've been with us when days were good. And all the time, the most important thing, to me anyway, is to have somebody to clap you in the back and say, well done, even when you lost. And today we were looking, we would. And uh, we're going to have one hell of a night and we're going to have one hell of a week. But uh, this is not the end of this team yet. I wasn't going to be too disappointed for a week here because there's seven or eight, nine good years left in this team. And there's more young fellas coming up. And what I would do is I'd appeal to everybody that's involved with the senior club to get out there and, and, and promote the hurling game among the youth and make sure that the young people are coming through. Like, there's always one or two young fellas coming through every year. And last year, year before, we had Paul and Dave coming through, we had Cyril coming through, Martin Bailey coming through, Dennis Gordon. Different fellas have come through every year. I don't think we had a new player this year. And uh, it's, it's, it's something that I would worry about. So I want to make sure that you get out there and make sure that the younger players are being brought through. But this is not the end of this team. We're going to go further. And it hasn't sunk in yet. It's a bit of an employment at the moment. We haven't started really sort of yet. But as we're going to make one burst of this Leicester Club Championship starting next Tuesday night. I told you in the field the other night, the training is, we're off training this week. We're back next Tuesday night. And we're going to take on the Wexford Champions next month. And any of you fellas will call up for the county to make sure and go. Because at least we're going to have 10 fellas there. At least 10. And we're going to inject some Castleton steel in this place. All I can say, lads, is thanks very much to all the supporters, to all the players, and for everybody who stood by us. And uh, everybody, have a good night. And we look forward to meeting everyone as the night goes on. Thank you. We were not. We might have been, if you was one of the people over the years, we might have been low, but we're going up with a step or two now. And just on behalf of the selectors, I just want to say thanks very much to a great bunch of lads. Some of them are only there for the last year or two. Over them there are there for the last 21 years. Myself, I've been involved for 21 years, and it was, it was a dream come true today for Conwall to wear a jersey after 21 years. And
Like he's tough with us through thick and thin, and it's something that I have admired down for the years. I will appeal to young players around the parish, get your act together. Together we can do with that, the way that we go nowhere. We have to have unity, spirit. That's what we had the whole time. We've had that today, from the minute the ball was thrown in, until the last puck. I said to these lads over the past couple of years from Commerce, we're strong from as ever, whatever you made up your minds that to beat Commerce, you could do. You made it up this year, we beat Commerce, we beat Port D. What more have we to do, lads? Oh, Most teams won county finals down through the years, like first and Austria, Furness D, but they only had to beat one of them. We had to beat two of them. So lads, I just want once again to say to the lads, enjoy yourselves, lads. And I think Tom Hassett said it there today in the stand. Maybe next July, lad. A Castle Town man will step up and bring a Leinster Cup back to Leash. Yeehoo! Thanks for the look, lad. Thanks for the look, lad. And if you want to drink beer, suit yourself. But the rub won't be there all night. The beer will be there for this day week. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.